show again. This one is going to be interesting because I know a lot of people out there who are divorced in the faith. So let's get started. Did I pique your interest? The Gospel, Mark chapter 10, verses 2 through 16. I picked the long one. Have a cup of coffee. The Pharisees approached Jesus and asked, Is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? They were testing him. He said to them in reply, What did Moses command you? They replied, Moses permitted a husband to write a bill of divorce and dismiss her. But Jesus told them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, he wrote you that commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. In the house, the disciples again questioned Jesus about this. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And people were bringing children to him that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he became indignant and said to them, let the children come to me. Do not prevent them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Amen, I say to you, whoever does not accept the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it. Then he embraced them and blessed them, placing his hands on them. Let's talk about divorce. I'm divorced. My first marriage was in the Catholic Church. It was in, it was a, it was a pretty short marriage. My husband, after we got divorced at that time, filed for an annulment. I didn't much care. I wasn't really practicing the faith much or forced to on Christmas and Easter when I went to mass, but he went through the process and filed for the papers. And I have to be honest with you, when I received those in the mail to sign, I was pretty ticked off. They pretty much pointed to me as the reason as to why our marriage didn't work, that I didn't go into the marriage fully committed as the sacramental marriage is in the Catholic faith. Till death do us part. That's meaningful. That's exactly the point. You forgive, you grow, you love. You have children, you build this family. That is the point of a marriage in the Catholic faith. For me, I did not go into that first marriage in that frame of mind. So as much as I was ticked off, I had to admit, it's true. I really wasn't in it to win it. Uh, it's, it is what it is, it's sad. But now I've gone through another process. I'm married again in the church, sacramentally married. After going through a lot of effort to get there, I now know what marriage is about. That there's no question I'm not getting divorced from my husband. There is no question that forgiveness and love and kindness and generosity and support are what is so critical to a marriage. We went into this and I had a long conversation with my husband who, by the way, for those of you who don't know, is not practicing the faith. But he knew and knows how important our marriage is. So for those of you, maybe you've been married for 28, 30, 35, 40 years and it's your second go around you can still apply for an annulment for your first marriage. And it can still be granted so that you 
can have the blessing of a marriage in the church. I know there are a lot of people who have a really tough time with the teachings of the Catholic faith and the marriage and the divorce. I would like to make a suggestion. If you want to get back to the church and you want to be married in the faith, go talk to your priest. Find one that you can just share your story with and start the process. Who knows? It may not take a year or two. It, it really does depend. But if you start, you will eventually have an answer. Whatever that answer is, I don't know. And children, I was not open to life. I was on birth control for many, many decades. And I was too busy for kids. I chose my career instead. And I used to look at people who would have eight, nine, ten children like they were lunatics. <laughs> hey, you know, there's a way that you could stop that. It's called the pill or a vasectomy or something like that. You know, you could take care of that problem. And now I look at these families and the children and I think, oh my gosh, what a blessing. I now understand life and the purpose of a family. I'm bummed that I'm beyond that kind of stage to have children and that I didn't wrap my arms around it myself. I have two fabulous stepchildren that I wouldn't change the world for, but I don't have any of my own with my husband. Seeing a little mini you or a mini me growing up in your family and watching the personality, knowing that you have an opportunity to shape a human being, to be loving and caring on this planet, to truly teach them about the faith, which I wouldn't have done six, seven, eight, nine years ago. But now I get it. It took me a while, and I know there are a lot of you out there that aren't there yet either. Just know that there is a purpose to a man and a woman and a marriage, and that is to be open to children. Let God figure out how many you, you will have. There is NFP, Natural Family Planning, which you can use if you have good moral reasons not to have children. I have a blog on that, as a matter of fact. The link is below. So check it out on the reasons and the differences between the pill and NFP, because there are very big differences. And it took me a long time to figure that out. So again, for you people that are divorced and have that achy, hurty feeling about the church and how you've been treated, please go talk to a priest and see what can be done. Okay, and for those of you who are married sacramentally, congratulations. Please continue to bestow faith onto your children and see God growing in them every day because we're not going to get into heaven if we don't approach the kingdom of God like a child. We cannot walk around with our egos and pride saying, oh yeah, I'm all that. I'm a Jesus follower. I'm getting into heaven. How about you? How about you? Oh, look at what you're doing. Uh-uh. Every day, stick your hand up, grab God like a child, and say, please, Lord, help me lead the way, please. Woo! Heavy stuff today. So, smile love your family, appreciate your husband and your wives and your children, and have a blessed and inspired week.